Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Sounds like half of you are still asleep. Glory to God. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made, isn't it? Amen. Are you ready to advance? How many of y'all know the devil likes to bring delayed advancements? He interrupts with your advancements. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and starting at verse 1. Everybody there? Glory to God. Get the swords out. It's time to sharpen them up. Welcome to the second wind. Are those fans been off the whole time? I was going to say, is this why it's so hot in here? It's been hot the whole time. Whew. Oh, happy days. Just don't blow my pages. <laughs> Glory. You know, the Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Weak to what? Weak to submit. Weak to what? Submit. See, you know you've crossed over when you have dominion over your flesh and your emotions. You have dominion over your pain. Does everybody understand that? When you cross over, you have dominion. When you don't cross over, you don't have dominion. I can tell you everyone that's crossed over here in this room today and everyone who didn't. There's a change. Where there's no dominion, there's no crossover. Because crossover brings dominion. Does everybody understand? You must cross over. If you don't learn to cross over, you ain't going to make it. You'll go back right where you were and do the same thing over and over and over. Or you'll have knowledge here. You'll know about what's right and wrong. You'll know about what you're doing is wrong, but you ain't going to have no power to overcome it. Why? Because the power does not come from you or me. It comes from him. And if you don't cross over to get the power, you have none. Does everybody get it? It's vitally important. Then you'll think something and you'll obey it instead of being able to determine what it is. See, that's where God's presence is vital. Again, when you think about the apostles and disciples, they didn't have the Word of God. They didn't have a Bible. They had the Word living in them. The one who brought the Word was the Holy Spirit. They had a relationship because they learned how to cross over all the time. All the time. It's not some goofiness. Is every under, you know, it's not a goofiness. Why are you over? It's nothing like that. It's an area where you change in that crossover. Yours a heart change. All of a sudden, you know, boom. I know when God's presence steps into this room. When we worship, we, sometimes it takes one song, sometimes it takes ten. But then also when he shows up, man, there's that one song that makes connect. Boom! And <laughs> what took you so long? <laughs> I can't live this way. Why? Because that's where we came from. That's, we desire his presence. That's the crossover. We can't live without his presence. There's people that know the word. And they're still doing the same stupid stuff. Amen? I mean, I run into people all the time. They quote scriptures, the page numbers, and everything. They don't know the difference between the New King James or King James. And no arguing with that. Because they know the word so much, they're bound. The problem is, is they can't submit to the word. You see, the word should always bring you a thirst and hunger to enter. It should bring you something to enter, not just, okay, I got it, because you didn't get it. 
If you got it, you'd begin to cross over. If you didn't get it, you ain't going to cross over. You're going to still live carnal, carnal mind, carnal thinking, live by your emotions. Man, it just doesn't feel right. They're always about feeling. Again, when you cross over, you leave you behind. There's a new you that you've been, been born by the Spirit that is refreshed, awakened, says, yes. I'm a son, I'm a daughter of the Most High. If God's for me, who can be against me? There's a boldness that happens. And you know what? You get even bolder. Now you want more. Now his presence, you want more. You want more. The drink is more, not physical, more spiritual. Some people drink so much, I got to keep going to the bathroom. They're drinking the wrong thing. They spend more time in the bathroom than they do worship. Hallelujah. Hebrews 2, verse 1, let's grow there. Then they miss this, the moment. They miss that opportunity. They miss that divine appointment. Let me tell you, the devil knows exactly how to get you out of position when God's getting ready to go, boom! Oh, hallelujah. Verse 1, chapter 2. Therefore, let's speak it. We must give the what? More earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we what? Lest we what? Drift away. That ought to be a song, drift away. For if the word spoken through the angels proves steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a what? Just, now, that, what does that mean? It means you ain't going to outrun, you're reaping. Now, there is a way to do it, part of it anyways. That's the worship. You sow more in the Spirit, you outrun some of your reaping. Amen? But that means you're still going to be accountable and responsible for what you and I have done. That means that there's consequences no matter what. Amen? There's always consequences. But if you're in position, God will turn everything to the good. If your heart is truly humble, submissive, and you know you're not manipulating. Amen? So he says, listen, man, if the word spoken through the angels proves steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Wow. Now, again, drifting away. What happens? There's, listen, there's levels of deception. Amen. In this, he says, look, you and I are called with gifts and a calling. There's a gifts and calling. Gifts are abilities and so forth. There are also spiritual gifts and there's physical gifts. Amen. There's abilities. God's birth, birth right in you since you came into this realm. And many times until you are born again, those gifts are usually used for self or darkness. Until you are born again of the Spirit, now they're used for Christ. Amen. Then they're used for Christ. So in this, there is, there's a place where God tries to get us and prevent us from drifting away so we can maintain our gifts of our callings. In other words, the ability to fulfill your calling and purpose, and it's to fulfill your destiny. All of these things are granted with me and you to fulfill the things of God. But when there's a drifting away, that's an area where we begin to slack off. It's an area where we begin to compromise. It's an area where we begin to fall away. Everyone say fall away. Falling away. And it, the Bible tells us. Now these things will delay advancement. If the enemy can get you to drift, it's going to delay advancement. In 1 John chapter 5. Now, there's a, a divine delay by God. Amen? 
In fact, personally, I, I really believe it's all divine delay. God's going to hold you back. Amen? Now, there's a hold back from God sometimes to protect us. But then there's a hold back because of rebellion or disobedience. You know, the devil may be a part of it to, to cause us to drift away, but God still has the last say. He's the one that's going to hold you back or promote you. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. In other words, associate with darkness. Associate with the presence of evil. But he who has been born of God does what? Keeps himself. He keeps himself. In other words, he maintains a position of righteous authority. He maintains a position of what? Righteous authority. That's keeping yourself. And it says if you keep that position of righteous authority, the wicked one does not touch you. He doesn't touch you. He can't because you're in a position of true protection. He can't touch you. Now, he can try and throw his fiery darts at you. They can't touch you. You may hear them bounce off your shield of faith. You may hear the voice come, but it ain't going to touch you. Does everybody get it? Now, you got to remember, the first place the enemy tries to touch you is your mind. That's where he starts everything, your thoughts. You know, you don't realize that no matter where you go, everybody's touching one another. In the mind. Everybody's touching one another in that er area. One way or another. You see somebody, hey, you just touched them. Does everybody get it? So you and I got to come into a place where what are we accepting and what are we rejecting? And that is an area where you are maintaining a righteous position so that the enemy cannot penetrate you. That touch means penetrate. Verse 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Well, hello. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. Everyone say understanding. What does understanding do? Tells you what to do. That we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keeping yourself is to maintain a position of righteous authority. Again, God gave us the understanding of what? How to do. Understanding how to, how to do, how to do. Well, that's an area of perception. Perception is associated with interpretation. So when God released, when you have the understanding from God, you are knowing what to do because you can perceive things and interpret things. Does everybody understand that? In other words, you're going to avoid the bait of deception and destruction. And it comes in many forms. Those forms are called idols. All kinds of forms of idols. You can be your worst idol. Amen? Your job, your talents, your abilities, everything in the old can be your worst idol. Your mirror could be your worst idol. 1 Timothy chapter 4. You know, the Lord's always trying to get something to us. Always. He loves blessing his children, but he doesn't bless what's not approved by him. He doesn't bless rebellion. He doesn't bless backsliding. He doesn't bless anything to that arena. Now, he'll open a door of escape. Amen? But you still have to do the reaping, no matter what, till you start sowing to outrun some of that. 1 Timothy 4. Everybody there? Verse 1, let's speak it. Again, 
Now the Spirit expressly says that in their latter times, again, are we in the latter times? Yes, some will depart from the faith. They're going to depart from the faith. In other words, they're going to drift or fall away. Amen? Does everybody get it? They're going to drift or fall away. Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking in lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Deceiving spirits that bring doctrines of deception. They cause a drift or fall away from your gifts and calling. We overcome deception. The only way to overcome deception is through discernment in perception. And that's given by God's presence. Discernment and perception. You overcome deception. Again, he says, look at These are the things. These are demonic forces. They carry a presence. They carry a, a voice. And their voice is always promoting rebellion and darkness. This is an area where he, the Lord says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That means understanding of the things of the Spirit of God. You know, so many times people try to work out. It's not about working out your salvation. That's cooperating with God. But they try to work out their salvation, not in the Spirit, in the flesh. And the Word tells us that exercise profits little. So people are more concerned about exercising and eating healthy than they are getting in God's presence. So there's a lot of dead people in hell that are healthy. And they thought health was going to get them out of hell. Well, I ate all the right things. I exercised twice a day. I did all of these wonderful things. Yeah, but you never crossed over. Everybody all right? First Corinthians chapter two. I was hearing this individual's testimony. I don't know if I shared it. And uh, this guy was a he's a prophet now. He was a professional skateboarder making lots of money, had all kinds of contracts. He was out partying one night, and he felt ill. And he told everybody, man, I got to go. I don't know what it is. They thought, maybe you drank too much. He said, no, I only had a few things, whatever. And he went home, laid down. The Lord came and took him. Boom. First place he ended up was hell. The Lord showed him hell. And the, and, the, and the spirit and the angel that was next to him said, you've been called to be a prophet to the nations. And all of a sudden, a voice came out of the hell and said, fulfill your calling. That's why we're here. Whoa. And the Lord said, you don't fulfill your call, you're going there. Then he brought him to heaven. I was like, wow. Now this man has spent 27 years ago, he's well-known prophet to the nations. Some of the things he's been prophesying has been pretty intense. Things that are come to pass. One of the things he was talking about is gifts and callings. And how to enter in. And, and, but again, enter in is to cross over. Nothing comes without crossing over. You can do everything you want in the flesh. Don't mean nothing. You've got to cross over every day. Amen. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. In verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor enter into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. <laughs> These are the things God has prepared. Everything he's trying, he's preparing for you is to advance. Always. Always. 
It says, but God has revealed them to us through his what? Through his spirit. Listen, that's crossover. See, people are still trying to interpret everything by the carnal mind. They're trying to discern by the carnal mind. It won't work. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man that's within him? So the spirit of the man knows the things of the carnal. But the spirit of Christ in the new man knows the things of all the things of the spirit of God. Even so, no one knows the things that are of God except for who? The spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. Might means cooperate. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, I want you to grab hold of this. Discernment is comparison. When you discern, you're comparing something. Amen? Perception is interpretation of something. Now, what comes with discernment is called wisdom releases discernment. Understanding releases perception, which brings interpretation. I'll say that again. Again, he, what does he say? He says, look at discernment is comparing. Wisdom tells you what to do. To what? Compare. So wisdom releases. When the wisdom of God is there, you are able to compare or discern. Is everybody okay? When God releases and you learn understanding because it tells you what to do, that brings perception with interpretation. That's why it's vitally important that we have wisdom and understanding. Amen? Not from the world's point of view, but from God's point of view. Again, what does he say? Well, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This is spiritual discernment, not carnal discernment. There's a lot of people can discern medical, can discern sports, can discern how to bet, can discern <laughs> whatever. They practice things mighty and hard, you know, to, to be able to discern things according to. People go to school to learn. Why? To discern. Amen? But this is carnal discernment. There's a difference in spiritual discernment. Let's go a little further. Verse 14. But the natural man, the carnal man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Your natural man is not. If you're in the flesh, you can't get it. That's why you must cross over to get it. You know why? Because when you don't cross over, you're still about you. It's still about you, how you feel, how you think. I'm tired, I'm this, I'm that. My pain, my this, my this. Oh, God doesn't love me. I don't, why should I worship him? Nothing happens. You know, all of the poop from hell. But the carnal man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. And he ain't going to get nothing either. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them. Because they are spiritually what? Discerned. Wow. So what do you need for things of discernment? Wisdom from God. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Wow. Wow. In other words, that word judge means discerns all things. So you're judging all things. It doesn't mean you're judging a person. You're judging fruit. You can discern whether someone's in or out. You can discern whether they've crossed over or they haven't. You're, can, you can discern whether they're under oppression or heaviness. Whether they're smart or stupid. You can discern. Amen? And stupid comes from veil of blindness. That's the veil of the enemy. He veils them. Verse 16. Oh, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by what? No one. 
Why? Because there's a crossover relationship with the Lord where God, he knows God's his judge. He knows he doesn't get away with nothing. And he's not trying to get away with anything. He may make mistakes. She may make mistakes. And there's quick repentance because there's a true relationship. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So the mind of Christ must be activated. Again, spiritual discernment is to compare. Carnal man will and is not able to compare spiritual things of God. There's a lot of deception out there that people are to discern. Boy, they have fellowship with familiar spirits, doctrines of demons, uh, soothsayers and all this other stuff. These demons are challenging people and all, and they can get all kinds of information, and they can look really good. Believe me, I've heard testimonies many times. Listen, Satan, a demon, can remove a demon. He can tell the demon, come off that person. So people go to witch doctors and says, come off that person. Why? So people think that they're being healed. It's just the presence of a demon being removed. Then two years later, all of these people are going to this witch doctor, and they all die of cancer. Listen, the enemy knows how to bait people. Malachi 3. These things were advancements. Amen? Now, again, I want to reiterate the area to where when the Holy Spirit was giving me this, this was not the devil delaying the advancements. This was God delaying the advancements because people's cooperation with darkness. Does everybody get it? God was delaying their advancement. He wasn't allowing them advance. Why? He doesn't promote wickedness. He doesn't promote rebellion. He doesn't promote sin. He doesn't promote transgressions. He doesn't promote the things that are displeasing to him. So he holds the person back. He'll wait until they finally get to their knees. So they really, truly humble themselves. So they truly cry out. Listen, everybody knows they need help from God. I mean, when people get desperate, they say all kinds of things they're willing to do. But the problem is just following through with it. That's where that deception comes in. That's where that area comes in where pride and arrogance and haughtiness. And I'm okay. I went through it many times. I got clean for two days and I was good. I stopped drinking, stopped partying for a couple days. Of course, I ran out of money and I was broke and whatever. I couldn't. I had no choice. I sold everything. <laughs> but after two days, I was, I was hunting. Because the demon had to get fed that was in me. And they get fed by emotion. Malachi. Chapter 3. Is everybody there? Praise God. In verse 16. Come on, where are you? Hallelujah. How many of y'all know God hears your conversations? <laughs> I don't think he doesn't. <laughs> and let me tell you the other thing. Everything is recorded. Nothing is not recorded. See, people think if they go out and they close the door and shut the light off, God can't hear. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he hears, he sees. <laughs> he created it all. The light, the dark, <laughs> everything. And then it's recorded. And it's put in a book called Remembrance. But then there's a book of life. And in the book of life, there's also a remembrance. Those names that are written in the book of life. And there's a remembrance. There's a recording of the things that are under the blood and things that are not. So the Lord was listening in on a conversation in verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord listened and what? He heard them. 
So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who feared the Lord and who meditated on his name. He said, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I made them my jewels. Some of y'all want to be a jewel of God. Praise God. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again what? Discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between the one who serves God and the one who serves himself. Or the one who doesn't serve God. That is discernment. So the fear of the Lord. Now fear of the Lord is reverence, honor, and respect. Amen. That's going to take discernment. Does everybody get it? People who can't discern the fear of the Lord have never crossed over. You can't fear God. And this is not frightened of him. This is a reverence of loving him. Without that crossing over, there is no fear. There's no reverence. There's no honor. There's no respect. The word says when two or more gather together, he's in the midst. People don't even realize that. Why? Because they've never crossed over. When two are gathered together, you should autom automatically realize the Lord's in the midst. He's there. But see, people want to, well, I want to feel him first. He doesn't have to prove himself. He's already did it. He did it all on the cross. He rose from the dead, and he sent his Holy Spirit. He's already proved himself. He doesn't have to do anything. That's how he wants me and you to do is to cooperate and have a relationship with him. And he's not asking us to do anything but just to cooperate. That's all. Forsake not to assemble. Simple. Hallelujah. So the fear of the Lord, honor, respect, reverence. It's the ability to discern righteousness and wickedness. That's what he's saying. Well, can, where do you get the fear of the Lord? Not, not without his presence. The fear of the Lord comes from his presence. Hallelujah. Those who serve righteousness and those who serve themselves. You will be able to discern because wisdom comes from God's presence. Understanding comes from God's presence. Listen, without God's presence, you and I are nothing. I did not change without God's presence. That's how I changed. I changed everything. But I didn't change it. He changed it. He just invited me into his presence. And see, sometimes there's an area you got to keep pressing in until you bust. Don't give up. Heck, you, you, everything is a price. It's cooperation. Amen. Even at your job, no matter what you're doing, you've got to learn what you're doing. Amen. Then you, after you've been trusted in what you're doing, you've learned, you've not made too many mistakes, you get promoted. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but man, there isn't any better promotion than from God. Who, who want, uh, you don't want a promotion from men. Proverbs 9. Proverbs chapter 9. Hallelujah. Man, you know, out in the world, that's all they do, everybody talks about is when they're getting their next raise. When am I getting my next raise? Man, I've been here a month. <laughs> the 90 days comes up, they're like, whoa! That money... I'm worth more than that. None of us is worth nothing in the flesh. And every gift and ability came from God. So you might have gone to school and learned it, but that ability still came from God. Amen? But without him, we're nothing. 
So there's an area of life where he hides from us. He's distant. So he lets us play, thinking we're okay. And then we bundle this and mess this up and do this and disappoint ourselves and disappoint others and all kinds of other stuff. But he still lets us play out there until we turn our heart. Listen, when did Moses turn when he saw the fire bush? Touched his heart. This bush ain't burning, but there's fire there. What's going on? Sometimes God gets our attention in different ways. Through pain, through suffering, through rejection, whatever it is. Disease, hello. But the word says we were afflicted when we what? Went astray. So we bring everything on ourselves. You know, we can blame the devil all we want. <laughs> But we still bring it on ourselves. Why? Because we cooperated with his voices. In Proverbs 9.10. Let's speak it. What does it say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is what? Understanding. Here we go again. Now where do you get this from? God's presence. Again, you can have head knowledge Head wisdom and head understanding. But it is totally different. It's totally different. You get the wisdom from God. First of all, the fear of the Lord it comes from his presence. And it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Why? The beginning to what? Discern. Discern. And understanding brings perception with interpretation. Verse 11, for by me your days will be multiplied and your years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you will bear it alone. Hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, tells what to do or what to discern. Wisdom aids in discernment backed by the fear of the Lord. Understanding again, still how to do it which is perception with interpretation. In Hebrews chapter 12. How many of y'all know that we need discernment and understanding these days? This is why so many people are taken captive. They really don't have the discernment. They don't have the understanding. They're not able to perceive or interpret. There is no reverence of God there. They just do what they feel like doing because they want to. You know, when King Saul was a king, and he was commanded to go out and to destroy the Amalekites, he was commanded to destroy everything. Now, it may sound gory to an individual that's carnal, because he said destroy the children, everything, because they were Nephilim race. Does everybody understand that? They were the Nephilim race. They were breeds of the, off, of the fallen angels and humans. He wanted to destroy them all. When the Lord told them to cross over, he sent them to destroy those races. And so King Saul went to go destroy. Well, he came back, and he brought the king of Amalek, and all the cattle and some of its gold and other things. And Samuel said to him, why have you done this? Why have you disobeyed the Lord? He's going, what do you mean disobeyed the Lord? Man, I brought this dude back. I did God a favor. I did God a favor. I, I brought the finest of cattle so, and, and so that we could, and, and sheep so we can sacrifice these to the Lord. They're the best. I brought back the king to show God he's awesome. No, you disobeyed the Lord. He finally says, you're right. I did. I listened to the people instead of God. That simple compromise removed him from king. And when God removed him from king, guess who stepped in? Demons. And they came and tormented him. 
they called distressing spirits because God lifted his presence from them. He put up with Saul long enough. He gave him enough opportunities, enough rescues, and he finally said, nope, done. You are removed from being king. And when he removed them, demons came. And then Saul had to get someone that can bring God's presence to remove those demons around him. And that's when David came in. Because David was now anointed to replace King Saul. But that didn't happen for years later. So in the meantime, David became his armor bearer. And King Saul loved David, but hated him. <laughs> Why? Because he loved David in spirit as a son. But he hated him because he was favored by God. See, the anointing had transferred. So without David, King Saul could not exist. So then, eventually, King David, or King Saul, came against David. And David had to flee. Then Saul finally died in his son. And uh, David took over. I want to share with you something that the prophet said when I was listening to him about this. One of the things he said that in 2020, and this, you can, you know, in the word the Lord gave us in 2020, one of the things the Lord said, many people were going to be taken home that, that are not in position. They will be taken home because many people are just in the way. And one of the things he also said was the area to where he knows how evil the Democratic Party is. God sees all, knows all. He said they will begin to die off. And it won't be one at a time, it'll be three. We haven't seen that yet. Well, actually, they've been going one at a time. Or actually, probably three. I think you got two presidents and a couple other dudes, and, or two, uh, one president and some congressmen and so forth that have died off already. And some people that are promoters of the Democratic Party and that are in the Democratic Party have died off. There was three of them, right, just recently, in the last, last year. So... Again, we are in a time of seriousness. There's a time to be serious. There's a time to play, but then there's a time to be serious. When it comes to these things in the spirit realm to be able to discern, perceive and interpret, it's serious. Why? Because you can get Listen, when you go to a street corner, every, if you're walking in a street, you go and there's a busy street, you check the light out, don't you? You're not going to just walk into the street, although some people have. You know what? I've seen people walking in the street. You know what? They're on their cell phone. Walking right in the midst of people. Because they're on their cell phone. See, they crossed over on the wrong side. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12. Is everybody there? <laughs> In verse 1. Glory to God. Hebrews 12. Thank you, Jesus. As everybody, let's speak it. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with what? Endurance. The race that is set before us. In other words, if you ain't crossed over, you don't have endurance. You're a weenie. Wimp. Strong in the flesh and weak in the spirit. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not resisted to bloodshed striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation 
which speaks to you as to what? Sons. My son, my daughter, don't despise my chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you're rebuked by him. Hello. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son or daughter whom he receives. Why? To get him in position. Listen, nobody likes to be rebuked, but if you are in position, you look for it. You look for conviction. Does everybody understand it? Why? Because you don't want to do anything that offenses God. You want to stay in position no matter what. People get so easily offended, they forget that rejection is protection. Rejection brings correction. Amen? I mean, protection brings direction. But they, they accept it as rejection all the time. So when they get a jet, re they think, no matter what's said, because they're stinking flesh. That's no spirit there. When you're rebuked, you should thank God. The word says, slap my head. Do whatever you got to do to me. Cause me to know, Lord. Cause me to know. Kick me in the butt. I don't care what you got to do. I don't want to miss it. Verse 7. If you endure chastening, rebuke, correction, chastisement, amen, God deals with you as a son or a daughter. So you girls don't think you're getting away with this. For what son or daughter is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons and daughters. Wow. That's why people always run from the corrections. They always get offended from these things. You know why? Stinky pride. That's all it is, is pride. Still fighting for their lives, thinking they still know everything. Amen. I was that way. For a long time. So the one who knows everything got a hold of me. Then I realized I didn't know nothing. And the more you get deeper to realize no matter how much word you get, no matter how deeper you go, you realize you get smaller. You don't get bigger. You get smaller. <laughs> Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and what? Live. For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields a, the peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness to those who have been trained by it. That means you must be able to accept it. Not reject it. Not run from it. Amen? Oh, we are a race of endurance. <laughs> and we're in a race of endurance. What does it do? It brings us to the place of, look at, you must endure to overcome. You must endure to cross over. You've got to endure no matter what it is. We all have to endure. That's Patience is endurance. People go, I don't pray for patience. It's coming no matter what, homie. You don't have to pray for it. It's coming. You're going to learn how to endure, and God's going to bring you and challenge you to endure. He's going to chasten you, set things before you, all kinds of stuff. He's going to have your boss turn on you. He's going to have all kinds of things. He's going to allow these things to happen to see what you're going to do. See, it's like working out. People go to the gym, we go to chastening. Proverbs 23. Oh, happy days. In verse 1. Let's speak it. When you sit down to eat with a ruler or somebody in authority, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. Now, this appetite is not, I don't want to say 
physical. I'm talking about spiritual, but spiritual deception. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Does everybody get it? If you are a man given to appetite, do not desire his what? Delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. Deceptive food. Now, you know he's not talking physically then, is he? He's talking spiritually, not saying that somebody's donuts are deceptive food. They can dress them up all nice, and, but there's still poop inside, you know? He says something very powerful. He says, do not, verse 4, do not overwork to be rich. Because of your own understanding, your own understanding, in other words, there is no perception or interpretation. You're just looking at me, myself, and I. Cease. Stop it. For I bury you alive in a box. Verse 5. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser. I call that a compromiser. <laughs> Nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel so you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Carnal appetites are lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. They cause a drift. They bring flawed perception and discernment. Again, we want to keep activating our faith. We want to keep things in a mo movement of advancement. Amen? We want to advance in the spiritual realm. Listen, as you advance in the spiritual realm, you also advance in the physical realm. Again, the gifts and the callings are to assist the expansion of the kingdom of God. We don't want any delays in these areas. Amen? We want to advance. We are on cutting edge right now of all kinds of stuff happening. Cutting edge. Zephaniah, chapter 1. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 12. Oh, hallelujah. Delayed advancements. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Let's speak it. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps hmm. and punish the men who settle in complacency. That means they're not serious. They're lukewarm. Who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor do, will he do evil. In other words, ain't nothing going to happen. I'm all right. I go out and do what I want. Therefore, their good shall become, become what? In other words, they're going to lose it. Amen? And their house is a desolation. They shall build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. Wow. Complacency is not serious enough. They're lukewarm. They're not paying attention to the things of God. They're paying more attention and distracted by the things of the world. In James chapter 1. And almost done. One more location. James chapter 1. The Word tells us, because we are in the latter days, that we are to be serious in prayer. Amen. We're to be watchful. The Word also says, you know, the devil comes to seek what? Those to kill, to destroy. That's why the Lord says be consistent, be alert. Amen. Be vigilant, be con consistent, and, and be uh, alert. Verse 
Verse 12, James 1. Everybody there? Hallelujah. Blesses the man who what? Who what? Heck, just blesses the man who endures. Then you got temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, this temptation is going to come to cause delay. Delay what? Advancement. He's going to tempt you with everything with worldly, carnally appetites. Drugs, pornography, alcohol, all of that's addiction. But then there's other things. Work, selfish, fear, all of these other things that the world attacks you with. Amen? Look at, look at what's going on right now. People are bound, they're still walking around with gloves and masks and Darth Vader suits, you know. Hallelujah. Verse 13, he says, Let no one say when I am tempted, and I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away, when he drifts away. By his what? His own desires, which is emotions. And then enticed. Then when desire has conceived, in other words, this emotion, this want, emotional want, has been conceived, it's been agreed with in you. It gives birth to sin. In other words, it invites darkness. So what happens is the enemy throws the fiery dart, the seed. You accept it, agree with it. Now it opens the door. You've actually unlocked the door to allow him to come in. Gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. Those things are always leading to death. They get rewarded by killing you. You know that. If they can promote your death, they get rewarded. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift and calling is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variance or no shadow of turning. Hallelujah. Everybody there? And of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits to his, of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. In other words, shut up and listen. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and does not, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Wow. Endurance to receive. Endurance to get in God's presence. Endurance to overcome. Again, you can't overcome without God's presence. You can't overcome what, over, what uh, crossing over. That's what over, crossing over is, is it's getting into God's presence. Amen. And I'm going to close it, Psalm 4. Psalm 4. Endure. I, wonder if I've not, I don't know anybody named Endure yet. I've heard people named Faith and all kinds of stuff. I haven't heard anyone named Endure. Hey, this is endure. Praise God. <laughs> Verse 1. Let's speak it. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. 
How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to what? To shame. How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? That's false perception. But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and don't sin. Meditate with your, within your heart on your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increase. I will both lie down in peace and sleep for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in peace safety. That means untouched. Amen? Delayed advancements. Those are actually divine delays sometimes. Amen? Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask that you seal this word and bring us the discernment and perception that is so needed through your wisdom and understanding. Help us to know where we are so that we are not fooled or become foolish. But let us know exactly in that place of position so that we maintain the righteous pos position of authority all the days of our life for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.